Hello, so I had a stupid idea. Well, actually a couple of weeks ago now. This is a video containing some footage which I recorded for my Keythane mining program series. But I never actually got around to pulling it up because I never finished the episode. I kind of got sick of it because I was trying to build something that um, wasn't quite working. So I figured I'd just sort of put it together and maybe it'd be interesting to some people watching my horrible failures at design and engineering. So what I tried to build was a SSTO that could be refueled with Keythane in orbit and then go fly on Duna. So uh, I'll just hand over to past me now and he'll explain all that again. And then I'll show you the final iteration, which failed even more miserably than the previous ones. Uh, and that'll be the end of the video, I think. And the end of any attempts at building a plane ever again, because I hate them. Hello and welcome back. I'm just going to go straight into a launch here. I'm doing it in real time, because this is an SSTD, and that's not as disgusting as it sounds. It's just a plane, but yeah, single stage to Duna, that's what I've called it. It's not a single stage to orbit. So yeah, what we have here, we've got some jet engines to start us off, and some big wings, obviously, and a nuclear rocket going down the middle, so that has plenty of delta V. You can see Mechjeb's telling us that has 2,500 meters per second, which is decent. Oh god, turn the SAS on. Up, up, uppity, up. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit heavy, but it does fly. I have tested it. I have not gone into orbit yet, because I am terrible at flying. So, I don't know, this section may end up being recorded again. So, now we're off the runway and we're flying, we'll just pull up about 45 degrees from the horizon. And so we can get some altitude. We'll naturally decelerate now, but that's okay. It will start accelerating again in a minute. So we've got Jetsy there in the windowless cabin. Yep, this Mark II cockpit is lighter than the other one for some reason. I I suppose it's just so because it, it knows that you're gonna attach something to the front maybe. So I don't know. But this one is definitely bigger than the Mark One. Uh, maybe it's just the fact that it has absolutely no instruments in it. I mean seriously, there's nothing in here. No windows, bit of air conditioning there. That's nice. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what all that is on the top. <laughs> Can't see that on the inside. And yeah, we also have these Keythane jets here. We've got a Keythane tank up there. I don't know if that's uh, connected enough. Although, I mean, these liquid fuel tanks are not connected to these jets, and they're doing okay. So, hopefully, it's not a problem. And yeah, we've got the fuel port at the front from the Kerbal Attachment System mod. So, hopefully we can get this thing into orbit and rendezvous with the station. See, we're picking up speed now. And dump a load of Keythane in there, which is going to change our center of mass, which will be fun. But, um, yeah, that's going to change anyway as we use fuel. It's got a, a very large wing surface. So I think I should be able to accurately control my lift and not crash into the surface of Duna. Would be nice. Right, so let's actually get the landing gear up. That would be useful. Um, yep, I think I'll stop talking for a bit and I'll probably just edit a bit out until I'm higher up, because there's really nothing to do now other than wait for this thing to accelerate. Okay, so I'm a bit higher up now, up to about 15 kilometers. I don't think I really have the optimal amount of air intakes there. I have 
seven of them. I have six up at the front here, these ram intakes. And a nacelle somewhere, unless I took that out. I think I took that out at some point. So yeah, I'm just nosing over. Starting to go horizontal now. It's a little bit lower than I would have hoped. But um, <clears throat> so long as we pick up plenty of velocity, it doesn't really matter where we do it. Yeah, I would like to get up to about 20 kilometers. Try and pick up as much speed as I can up there. Because there's very little air resistance up there, so you can really gun it. And uh, as long as I'm accelerating and not flaming out, I'll continue to use the jet engines. So the air intake is going down slower now. Yeah, and this is where we start to flip out if we're not careful. So my plane is banking here. I'm just going to cut the engines because we are flipping all over the place. And that is not ideal at all. We have lost 200 meters per second in speed in just a few seconds. And this is really what I was talking about when I said I have to be not terrible at flying. Because I am indeed quite terrible. Uh, I think that I... yeah, I'm gonna have to... Go back to the launch here, because I have zero control here. It's it's pointing backwards. It wants to point backwards. I don't understand how that works as a aerodynamic thing. Point the right way. <laughs> Come on. Right. I think I'm gonna put some RCS on this and uh, try that again. Yep. Made some uh, adjustments. This is the Mark III. You didn't see the Mark I because it was terrible. Uh, right, I've just added another cluster of ram air intakes on each side. And that is allowing me to go to a much higher altitude. And there is some RCS. There's some little thrusters here and there. Hopefully I don't really need those. But yeah, losing all control and flailing about like a, a lost swan is not it's not exactly fun yeah it just seems to be a problem with going horizontal in such a rarefied atmosphere doesn't seem to like it see how it's banking yep yep I've lost control RCS does nothing Alright, let's fire the rocket engine. Try and get it. No, don't point backwards. Let's try and get it pointed just vertically. Alright, because we are... I mean, this thing is not very efficient at sea level, but we're actually... well above sea level, so it is still very efficient. We are losing altitude, though. This does not have the thrust to weight ratio. Uh, I, d I don't know why it just flips out at a certain altitude, but yeah. We can't. We can't get fast enough without it just sort of flipping out. Alright, let's try and point prograde. Let's use that RCS. Oh dear. That's no good at all. I want to at least get this under control. Well, I guess I could just rotate that now, maybe. Nope. It just, it wants to point backwards. I don't understand how a aerodynamic craft could want such a thing, but... Point in the direction that you're going, come on! I blame you, Mitt Long. You and your silly name. Fly this plane, damn it. Come on, just move. Actually, <laughs> I have no control. Yes, that's it. Point towards the prograde. And then I can pull up out of it slowly. No, don't. Don't do that. No. 
Come on. Oh dear. Two kilometers from the sea level. Come on. Come on. Point down. There we go. Now slowly. No, don't flip back up again. <laughs> uh, abort! Abort! Dear God, abort! Oh dear, he didn't survive. Oh dear, wee boing. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Okay, I just added a reaction wheel to it. Still on the Mark III, there's no need to rename it. Just shove the reaction wheel in the front there. That's often a solution to many of KSP's problems. So yeah, I am cruising about... Oh, I just nearly hit 20 kilometers there. I couldn't quite hit it. So I just started descending again. That's not good. Let's try and pull up a bit. So yeah, I just opened this uh, flight info thing from the far mod. It actually tells me my air requirements met over there. So that is telling me just exactly how much air I'm sucking in compared to how much I need. I'm currently sucking in 550% of the air required to run these engines, which is excellent. So that means that we can run at this altitude for quite some time. We're still accelerating. What I am worried about is this nuclear engine not having enough thrust for such a large craft. And also the fact that I'm flapping around like a beached fish. It's very hard to control. The reaction wheel is helping, but the fact that there's no air here and I just have big wings that stick out for basically no reason at this altitude. Yeah, it's it's hard to keep this from just spinning around in circles, to be honest. And I would like some old style SAS right now. You know, the SAS that just kept you completely steady. But yeah, I'm picking up speed now, 700 meters per second. And at this point, I should mention, I don't think I've ever actually successfully flown an SSTO. <laughs> so this will be a first, if I actually manage it. Oh, that's, that's leaning. Don't do that. Nope. Come on. No, don't flip out. Don't lag spike. No. Come on. Give me back my frames. There we go. Yep, that is recording onto a hard drive and running programs off the hard drive at the same time. I really ought to have a separate hard drive for fraps. That would be sensible. So I'm actually losing altitude here. Yeah, that is a sign that this plane just does not have enough lift, actually. Most of the lift is being generated by the thrust of the engines. Well, I'd say about half of the lift. But, yeah, there isn't quite enough lift for this to uh, glide, for instance. So, yeah. I have to aim about 5 degrees above prograde for it to go in a straight line. It is taking an immense amount of key presses just to stop it from flying around in a circle. Going nearly a thousand meters a second. This is very much brown trousers time for Mitt Long there. You can see he is absolutely terrified. As am I because oh dear oh dear nope Come on. Uh, let's get that going. Come on. Get back around to the bloody prograde. Why do you want to point backwards? You son of a bitch. There, yes, that. I've lost so much speed. <laughs> no! I hate you. I hate everything. Stay there. Why are you pointing in ways that you shouldn't point? Uh, 
So I mean, I set up my action group so that it shuts down those engines and closes all the intakes, so I've got no resistance from the intakes. And those engines aren't flaming out. There's no reason to flip out like that. The center of thrust is in the middle of the craft. It's in the center. It can't... I mean, I guess there's some stuff on the top and the bottom, which is kind of flipping it out maybe, but no, I mean we just don't have enough thrust in this stage. I think that's all it is really. Uh, so I guess I need to put in a, an aerospike really, don't I? Yay! More building. Right, so we're back here again. Yeah, yeah, put an aerospike on it. I still don't think it has enough thrust to be honest. I was hoping that as I burnt off this liquid fuel I would gain more uh, thrust to weight ratio, but you can see this stage here is the one with the air spike on and it, even though it's actually stage one, eh, I don't understand that. Yeah, 0 0.84 which is not enough to overcome Kerman's gravity, we need that to be at least one. Um, but let's just kind of hope <laughs> that it works, I don't know. So we are doing a thousand meters a second now. We're still not flaming out. But I think very soon, I think it's maybe 1200 meters a second if we haven't flipped out by then. So I'm watching this percentage here as well. If that gets anywhere near 100, I will fire up the rocket engine. So, and yeah, I took the RCS off, that was to save weight. It's not necessary, really. Don't need it at all. Okay. I'm gonna wait till the air requirement is at 150%. And fire up the. Whoops! Didn't add that to the action groups, but I did, uh. I did cut out the jet engines anyway with the same action group. Come on, reaction wheel, do your job. Yeah, this has no vectoring, so all of the vectoring is going to be done by that reaction wheel and the command pod. Come on, nose up. Yes, we're accelerating. Oh wait, oh no, now we're decelerating. Come on. Yeah, we're accelerating as long as I don't move too far away from the prograde vector. But yeah, we are extremely rapidly running out of fuel. So our nav ball has switched to orbits. I no longer have any control. I'm trying desperately to point this back towards the prograde marker. There we go. Oh, oh frame rates. We're not near the station, are we? <laughs> nope. So yeah, this is extremely unwieldy. 700 meters a second. Delta V left. It's not enough. So let's go back over to prograde. I probably wasted a bit going a bit too vertical, but... Yep, I think that... This is a flawed design, just in general. So, 400 meters per second, no. We're not going to get orbital. It's going to be suborbital. I'm going to cut it as soon as I see my Apple apps hit. 70 kilometers. So we're practically on the Apple apps anyway, you can see, because my prograde marker is right on the horizon. Near enough. Actually I'll cut it there because that is actually out of the atmosphere. It's only approximately 70 kilometers. So let's fast forward a little bit. I want to see if I can just eke out a little orbital velocity but I... Woo, don't control it during physics warp. But yeah, I severely doubt, sincerely doubt that this is enough fuel. 
Alright, open her up. And nope. No parry apps for me today. Ah, that is unfortunate. So what we need there is about another 200 meters per second delta V, or at least a more efficient ascent panel. Really. Because, I mean, we're very close to orbital velocity there. But then we do actually need to rendezvous with the station. So, you know, we're needing a good 300 meters per second delta V more. So I'm going to go revise this design again and <laughs> see what ways I can save, whether I can add more fuel without it collapsing. And yeah, that's pretty much where I left off. I got sick of it, sick of things not working. I went back and radically redesigned the plane. I got a single turbojet in the middle, a couple of aero spikes. So, because yeah, I acknowledged that I needed a greater thrust to weight ratio on the rocket stage. And still with a couple of key thing things, uh, jet engines. But um, yeah, I <laughs> I have to have the wheels on these weird little things, and that results in some interesting behavior. Or at least it did last time I tried to fly this, but um, yeah, if you don't attach the wheels quite right, it tends to go to the left or the right. So it's coming to the left here. I can do a bit of corrective steering at the moment because we're going 22 meters a second. But yeah, if I just let go, it'll just get worse and worse and worse. And um, yeah, I'm just barely keeping it on the runway now. Uh, now it's just, I'm holding down the D key and this is what's happening. <laughs> and oi, whoa. Yeah, so even with struts holding these things together and you know, it just starts wobbling around like crazy with the wheels like that. So yeah, I, just, I got fed up of it. And um, this is why, because nothing was working. I See, I even went for like a dihedral wing pattern, you know, hoping it would give me a bit of stability in the upper atmosphere, but you know, everything just went horrible. And this thing just can't even get off the ground. Like, it has enough lift, but because of the wheels spazzing out like that, it can't uh, get up enough speed to pull up. So yeah, let's go land on that aircraft carrier. <laughs> no. Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey. Okay. And goodbye, old school. Oh my god, he's alive. It's a Christmas miracle. Yep, so that was a pretty stupid idea, trying to build an SSTD, not an SSDO. I, it is possible. <clears throat> it's entirely possible. The mathematics says that it's possible. So, yeah, someone smarter than me can go and build it, though, because I'm just sick of building planes. But anyway, thank you for watching the premature end of my key thing program. Uh, maybe I'll try it again in the future without trying to build silly things. I'll see you later.